Ephesians 5.33. I, I wept when I mm. saw this the first time. Mm. I think this is the biggest secret to marriage mm. that God has given. Uh, and, and it's not the verse you think it is. Ephesians 5, verse 33. Each one of you, men, also must love his wife as he loves himself. Uh -huh. And the wife must respect her husband. Yeah. I mean, how, how much love is he going to give you? Does your husband love himself? Yeah. There's question number one. Yeah. Does he feel good about himself? Yeah. Is he affirmed in his role yeah. as husband, yeah. provider, yeah. father? Because yeah. if he is, then what is he going to have mm -hmm. to give to you? Mm -hmm. Just yep. what you need. Right. But, but we fuel it oh. by our respecting of him. Yeah. I was in a conference. I got to tell you this. I was in a conference, probably 2,500 people. <clears throat> I would say uh, the, the majority of them were not believers. Okay? And I heard Dr. Egerich, uh speak on this subject. And he spoke for 45 minutes, never once quoted the Bible, never once said anything about any Christian beliefs. You could have been there with no relationship with Christ and enjoyed the speech, but there wasn't one thing biblical about it. And, and rightfully so in that setting. He, he concluded by saying, and this is exactly what it says in the Judeo-Christian scriptures and quoted that verse. And 2,500 people stood up and cheered mm -hmm. and clapped. It, it's not that hard. You know, we make it hard. And I'll, I'll just turn to the other side, okay. the woman's side okay. here, because this blew me away. A woman needs eight to 10 meaningful touches each day mm. just to maintain physical and emotional health. Mm. I think of women watching who, who mm -hmm. were last touched by the hairdresser exactly. and, and nobody since, but at eight to 10 meaningful touches each day just to maintain physical and emotional health. More than 80% of those touches need to be non-sexual. Sexual touch, exactly. That's one of the recovery processes we use we call it non-sexual touch or sensate focus exercises. It has to be done. Now, guys often say to me, <clears throat> well, I'm just not the touchy-feely type. It's just a bunch of baloney because <laughs> if they had a girlfriend, they would be touchy-feely, hmm. okay? So everybody is that way when you're in love and you're infatuated. And it is interesting. It, you do have a physical exercise here yeah. where you get yeah. husband and wife. Yeah safely yeah. touching. Yeah. And you can't let it lead to sexual activity. M most couples have done a behavioral conditioning process where if I touch you, it's going to lead to sex. And so wives oftentimes learn over the course of a long marriage to not touch their husbands because if they do, he's going to take them upstairs to the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And that is so sad. That is, in fact, in my premarital class, I tell guys all the time, let me tell you the key to this. Say no sometimes to sex and just settle for touch. Mm -hmm. If you do, you'll reap huge benefits in your marriage. Yeah. Two keys, both sides yeah. Yeah. of the coin, yeah. the man and the woman, to, to building something mm -hmm. where you can trust. Yeah. Where trust you, is what it's oh, really it, about. Oh, that's what this is all about. These non-sexual exercises actually take you back to infancy. The very first developmental stage in infancy is trust versus mistrust. Yes. And how does a baby begin to build trust? Through safe touch by his mom, his mother, through a soothing tone of voice, mm -hmm. and through meeting his needs. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what a marriage is all about. Susan Johnson wrote a great book just recently last year called Hold Me Tight. Okay. And she focuses totally on emotional focus couples theory. It's, it's wonderful stuff. There was so much stuff. I, I finished each one of these interviews saying, oh, did we do this? Did we tell them about this? Uh, just a reminder that these books are workbooks. It's heart work. And some of it is hard work. It is. Um, it's it's a, an exploratory mission. Uh, but you will know your spouse better. And you will help to safeguard your marriage. Just a reminder, high risk factors, and I think we've talked about most of those, high risk factors pr plus stressors, Plus, dangerous partner equals close call. Yeah. And I'm sure our discussion has helped to identify some of those things uh, you need to be aware of. We haven't talked about the four, four classes of extramarital affairs. The one thing I want to say okay. that you bring out very strongly is that if you are confronting your spouse uh, or he is a, or she is confessing an affair, that the sinner mm -hmm. needs to experience the pain mm -hmm 
of the one betrayed, mm -hmm. his wife or, or her husband, mm -hmm. who's been cheated on. That, that you can't gloss over this. No, no, no. Mm -mm. There's no easy street no, no. on this process. But there are two ways to do that. Okay. The, first off, uh, many times, uh, the, let's just say the husband had the affair. Many times it takes a while back in the recovery process before they can allow the pain to surface. So you might not see the pain right away, but it's not a matter of, of them having to be very sad or sorry or sorrowful initially. Many times they're not. In fact, many times the pain that is expressed is for the lost girlfriend or boyfriend. They have to give up the other They have partner. to give up, and there's a lot of depression that goes with that. But the second thing that happens, that needs to happen, is you have to tell the story in such a way that they can understand how painful it is. And a third thing that helps, helps them begin to feel that pain is if you make the forgiveness letter specific enough for them to write it and read it to their spouse exactly what they did, many times provokes a lot of that pain because it's very shameful as you begin to realize what you've done and what you need forgiveness for. Hmm. We're not done. Okay. And I hope you're not done uh, taking this journey with us. Some very important insights. You know my favorite passage uh, when it comes time for someone's wedding, Ecclesiastes 4. Two are better than one. Mm -hmm. That's God's idea. But that chapter concludes, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. Mm. Uh, what you discover in this journey with David is that God is able. God is able to take you from where you are right now in your, in your marriage um, to, to where he planned for it to be. Can we help you today? Our prayer line is available. We would love to be a listening ear and to pray with you.